Hey everybody, in today's video, I've been asked a lot about solving a hook. The less common problem that, you know, majority of recreational golfers have, but it's also a problem. You don't wanna be hitting the ball offline to the left if you're a righty or to the right as a slicer, you know, you just wanna get the ball in play. So let's talk a little bit about it. Hey everybody, Scott Hogan coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're here in the studio. We're gonna talk a little bit about hitting a hook. Before we do that, make sure you click that subscribe button. And also, if you wanna check out our online course, we're gonna be going through our six week masterclass, how to take your game from the range to the golf course. Check that out, I'll link all of that below, including merch, all that stuff, if you're interested in hats or anything like that too. So um, with that, let's get into hitting a hook and why it happens and how do you get rid of it. So the first thing that we have to talk about, and the questions have been mainly with the driver, hey, hitting a hook with the driver, and this is where I typically see more people having a hook problem than with an iron. It's a little bit harder to hit a snap hook iron, and there's a few reasons for that. So the first thing we have to look at, I'm gonna bring my driver in here, and we're gonna start looking at, if we have to understand what's going on with the driver. So if you actually take a close look at your driver and you start looking at the club, driver faces are not flat, okay? They have a little bit of what's called roll and bulge to them. So it's basically like trying to hit, if you ever took like a basketball and you try to hit something with it, you know, you gotta catch it real center there or the ball's gonna start shooting off directions. But because the club is also hollow, which I don't think a lot of people know is that drivers are actually hollow and golf clubs are actually hollow, is with it being hollow, when it hits, there's actually some expansion of the golf club. And they do that by design because they're trying to help you keep the ball in play. Instead of like hitting the toe, that ball would normally shoot way off to the right. With irons, you'll actually hit the ball a little bit more right when you're hitting an iron, you hit it off the toe. But with woods, you know, and hybrids, drivers, three woods, those clubs, what actually we get is this expansion of the club and that creates a what we call gear effect. So this club kind of expands. Let's say I hit it off the toe, it's gonna expand and then it kind of wraps itself around the ball and then it's going to cause a hook, okay? It's trying to send it off to the right and then trying to kind of bring it back for you. And then the opposite's true if you go on the heel. So you're gonna start seeing some of these things you know, affect how it goes. The bottom actually affects it and the top affects it too. We can go into that later because that's more into launch conditions. But if I hit the heel of the club, I'm gonna see more of a, a heel fade, we would say. You have toe hook and a heel fade. Now, if you hit it far enough on the toe, you get a real, real bad toey hook shot. So the first thing you wanna figure out if you're hooking the golf ball is you have to figure out what is causing your hook. If you're somebody that's hitting it way on the toe, that could be a completely different fix than if you're doing it via the club path, club face variety. So the best thing you can buy is just get some Dr. Scholl's. You can use you know, impact stickers and stuff like that, but I don't like those because they actually affect how the ball spins. So this is one of the best things you can buy, have it in your bag or just keep it in your practice area. I keep this available over there for all players that come in here because they just, we preach to them about how you gotta hit the ball in the middle of the face. If you not only wanna hit it straight, but you wanna hit it far and all of that stuff. So you gotta figure out first if that's the cause of your hook. Now, let's say you are hitting it pretty good in the center of the face and you're making some good swings. You're gonna start saying, okay, hey, I'm still hooking the ball. What do I do? Well, the thing that's happening with a hook, let's break down what's causing a hook. So your club face is gonna be closed to the path that the club is swinging on, all right? So we'll show you a little bit of what that's gonna look like. And the club path is gonna be way too far out compared to where the face is pointing, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to try to close those two things together a little bit more. And so what typically we wanna to try to do is get the club path to get down a little bit. You're gonna to wanna to see that club path not be so in to out. And that's something that can be caused by a couple of things. One, a lot of times it's just poor sequencing of how you're bringing everything down. So what I typically see when I have people that are hitting pretty big hooks 
is their arms get way behind their body. And so their arms are stuck. And then that means the only place they can go is to swing way out away from their body. And then they have to actually really crank the club face closed as they, you know, try to save it basically. They're just trying to save a shot. So you're gonna see that be one of the reasons. Now this also could be, you could also hit really, really poor contact too in doing this. And that just really makes that hook really bad. But that's one of the biggest reasons I see people that struggle with the snap hook. So what is the fix there? Well, typically people do this because they've kind of heard and everybody tells them, oh, you've got to lead with your lower body and all this stuff. And not saying that doesn't happen from a standpoint like, it appears on camera that your your lower body is starting to go first, but they excessively do it, and then their hands and arms haven't done anything. They're just kind of hoping it comes along for the ride, and it's not how it works. You have to actually move your hands and arms too and get them into position. So what I typically do with people that are trying to fight a hook, we want to get that club down. So what we're going to do is make swings where we exaggerate just getting the arms to come down first before your body starts to move and then from there we're going to work on having everything pivot together in your swing this is going to make us actually try to hit a couple of little fades as we can go but we want to see that club path not have to swing so into out because your arms are in a good position where the pivot of your body can actually bring it around and make you get to where you want to go so that's usually going to be the first thing that we work we would work on if we're trying to fight that hook so the second thing that we'll work on then with the hook is again, it's gonna be on the club path, club face relationship. Well, what happens is a lot of times people can just be a little bit too armsy, a little bit too handsy, and they basically just don't know how they work. And they've never been told that, they just kind of try to square the face whatever way they can, and that's not what we want. We want active hands, but we want your hands to be trained in the swing. So they look like they're doing the right things. They don't look like they're doing much, but we feel it as golfers. We can feel the hands doing the work that they're supposed to be doing along with the pivot and everything else. So the way I like to do this, if we're fighting a hook, what I typically see is people bring the club down and they're trying to excessively shallow the golf club and they just throw the clubs way down to the ground. And then what happens is the club gets so low to the ground that the only thing it can do is shove again way into out and then it's going to cause some t some contact issues if they don't get all the way back out to the ball they might clip the ground a few times that would close the face a lot really starts to get to some issues with just how are you delivering that club so one of my favorite drills to do with this is we're actually just going to take our normal grip and we're actually taking our grip with our trail hand so for a righty your right hand and we're just going to take the thumb and the forefinger off of the grip and we're going to make some swings with those staying off the grip and what's going to happen is as that club starts to fall and there's no support there for the club what happens is your body starts to realize how it's going to deliver that club to the ball and it starts to get it to swing a little bit more out at the ball earlier so you're not going super in to out you're going to have a lot of things start getting cleaned up i think it's a great drill just to get a feel for a golf swing but this usually starts to get our path and everything to start neutralizing getting our body getting our arms getting our hands all to sync up throughout the swing which is going to be huge so there's a couple things that go on with the hook. You gotta figure out which one yours is. Is it a contact hook where you're hitting it way off the toe or is it a path face relationship? And then you kind of can go from there. So I would recommend if you're fighting a hook, the best chance to get rid of it is to get some help with it. Whether you come to us for an online lesson or just go see a teaching professional, they're gonna help you figure that out. But these are some of the fixes we would have to try to help you figure out how to get rid of that hook as you're going through. It can be a very difficult thing uh, because you're really close, but you're still getting a pretty big, wide, wild result with your shots. So if you have any questions about it, please make sure you leave that comment down below. And as always, if you like the video, click the subscribe button. That really does help. And if you have any questions how we can help you with your game, we're getting into the season, love to do that for you. So please make sure to send them in and we would love to address them in future videos. So. Thanks everybody for watching. Check out our link below for the online masterclass coming up, tailoring everything to your game. It's not just a broad class that's just for, hey, everybody does the same thing. Nope, it's something that's gonna work for everybody. So it's gonna be something that works on your specific game. 
So make sure you check that out below. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.